Picture this, you've just made a teal and orange color grade, and looking through your image, you can see that the darker parts of your image are not black, they're coming up as blue, and you can see it on your waveform. Easy fix. Go into your Luma versus Saturation, click on this first line here, and just drag down the saturation of everything that's kind of dark in your image. Boom, problem solved. But does that actually solve the problem? Hey guys, Nathan here. So today we're talking about balancing out the blacks and shadows of your image. And there's a couple different ways to do this and we're gonna go over the benefits and downfalls of a few of these methods. But before we get into it, be sure to hit the like button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. I put out two Resolve tutorials a week every Monday and Thursday. Anyway, let's get into it. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 16 and everything I show in this video can be done in the free version of Resolve. Now we just have this shot and just to keep things simple, I'm gonna show the full grade. So we're gonna go through and just delete everything here and add a new node with Alt S. We're gonna start off by adding some contrast into the image and I'm just doing things quick. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it, maybe bring my lift down a little bit, bring the gamma down, gain up just to the top because those windows look like they should be pretty darn bright. I'm gonna check my white balance just on his shirt. Yeah, it's looking like it's a little bit green dominant, so we can just check out our tint. Maybe bring that down a scooch and things look pretty good. We're gonna add new node with Alt S and we know we're gonna go pretty extreme with the grade on this, so I just wanna qualify out his skin. So we're just gonna use a qualify tool, click on the skin, see how we did. Maybe widen that out a little bit. You know what, I think we're gonna have to draw a window around it. So we're gonna take a little circle here, shrink it down, put it up over his noggin. Let's go to the beginning of our shot. Great. Now we have this window and then we're just gonna go into our tracker, track forward. And let's see how it does. Awesome, that seems to have done a pretty good job. And it follows him all the way through. Now we just wanna clean up our key a little bit. And then we're just gonna denoise it and clean up our black a little bit. And yeah, that seems to be pretty okay. So now we're gonna go out of our highlight. So now that we have his skin keyed out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another node with Alt S and then I'm gonna press Alt L for a layer node. Now I'm going to attach blue to blue. And what we're doing is we are basically putting his skin on top of whatever grade we're adding. And then with our layer node, we're outputting it so that this is on top of this. Now this is where our grade is gonna go. Now there's a bunch of different ways to get that teal look, but I'm gonna go dead simple with it. I'm gonna use my offset and I'm gonna do it in the primary bars. Now I like to adjust my offset by going into color and clicking on printer light hotkeys so I can then use my number pad to adjust the red, green, and blue channels. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the red down and the blue up. So I'm just pressing four and nine on my keyboard at the same time. Boom, that looks pretty good. Let's bring our green up just a scooch. Awesome. Now we have that kind of teal look that we like and we have a skin over top of it. Just for fun, if I disable this node, you can see it does really wash out of skin. So that's why we are bringing this in. And let's just go into our key tab and maybe bring down our output a little bit so it blends a little bit nicer, but we're not getting that dead skin look. So that's easy peasy. Next, we're gonna add a new node. And if we're looking at these shadows and these dark parts of the image, we can tell that it's definitely blue. We see the blue, then we see our green, then we see our red way down at the bottom. Now this is the part that we wanna address. And let's just do what we did at the beginning of the video. So we're gonna go into our curves, go into our Luma versus saturation, and we're just gonna click on this line here, right on the baseline roughly. And yeah, we'll just bring it so that it's in the darker parts of the image. And then we're just gonna drag this part down right at the end here in the darkest parts. And then maybe just bring that curve. And you can see it definitely makes a difference to our waveform. So if I hit Control D, and then to disable it and then re-enable it, it's totally making a difference. But let's look at, let's say the red on his shirt. So it's fairly red here. And then a lot of that goes away as we desaturate it because it's a darker part of the image. Now, all we're looking to do is get our blacks to be black. We don't want that blue color cast in there, but as a byproduct with this method, we're seeing that we're losing color information and we're losing some of that red and maybe there's a better way to go about it. Well, there is a better way. So we're just going to reset this node. And what we wanna do is we want to 
just adjust the color of the lowest parts of the image to counteract this blue. Now, if you're looking in your primary wheels, you may look at your lift and think, well, yeah, that controls the darker parts of the image. So let me show you something. We're gonna go into the edit page, go into generators, grayscale. We're then gonna drag that onto our timeline. And so that we can adjust it in the color page, we're gonna right click, click new compound clip and don't even bother naming it, it's fine. So now we're back in the color page and we have on our waveform here, this image that goes from dark to white. So if we make an adjustment on the lift, it should adjust the darkest part of the image, right? Well, check this out. I'm gonna adjust it up and you see that everything's moving up. Now it does have a bias towards the darkest part of the image, but it can adjust everything with the pivot point apparently being right at the top there. So it kind of moves like a lever. Now, if we adjust the gamma, you can see that it also adjusts everything and same with the gain. We can bring everything up and down with the pivot point really looking like it's at the end there just as a lever. Now, conversely, if we go into our log controls, check this out. We're gonna make adjustments to the shadow, which is actually controlling the darkest part of your image because its pivot point is here. And we can adjust that pivot point with changing our low range. So let me increase that and you can see it's gonna climb up. And if we decrease the low range, you can see it goes down. Now this is one of the benefits of working in the log controls when you wanna control a very specific tonal range of your image. And just to show you, it does work the same with your mid-tone and your highlight. And you can control your high range as well but that's neither here nor there. So let's go back to our image. We're just gonna get rid of the clip so we have more area to work with and look at here. So now what we wanna do is we wanna make this adjustment in our shadows. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to introduce the opposite color that we're seeing in the darkest part of the image to help neutralize it. So I'm not even looking at my screen when I'm making this adjustment. I'm just gonna be looking at my waveform. So we're gonna go over, I'm gonna to start to bring that red into the image. And we just want it so that everything basically lines up at the bottom here. And that way we know that all the values are the same. And we can check it actually, if we use our white balance tool, we can go over top of it and look at something that is supposed to be dark and see that the RGB values are fairly similar. Whereas if we disable the node, and use this white balance tool, we can see that there's quite a difference in these RGB values. So that's just a good kind of trick to use. So we're gonna re-enable the node and now we can adjust our low range. So we just want it to be the darkest part so we can bring that down a little bit and boom, that works way better. So if we turn this node off, you can see we have this blue color cast definitely in there, but if we turn it back on, you can see we've addressed that and we also haven't lost the red on our arm. So just to show you a comparison with the method we used at the beginning, I'm gonna hit Control Y on my keyboard to add a new version. If we right click, we can see we now have two different versions. I'm then going to reset this node grade, go into our Luma versus Saturation, and bring down the darker part of our image. So we've now lost the saturation in the darkest part of our image. And if I hit Control B on my keyboard, we can swap between the two different versions. So check this out. So this is with our shadows and this is with our Luma versus saturation. I'm just gonna get rid of the clips to give us more real estate to work with. So we can see with our saturation that we've lost a decent amount of red on his shirt. Whereas with the shadows method, we're able to retain that information. Now, if we go back to the Luma versus saturation, one could argue that we could just decrease this until we're only dealing with just the darkest part so that we are losing less of that red. So we can then press control B on our keyboard to compare. But as you can see, it's still not quite the same. And I do feel that you have finer control when using your shadows and you're also not losing color information. So anyway, folks, I hope that helped you make some sense of balancing out your blacks and the darkest parts of your image and also just learn a little bit about the log controls and how they do differ from the primary wheels and how you have more tonal control over different parts of your image 
if you want to use the log controls and how you can adjust that using your high and low ranges. So anyway, if you like this video, be sure to hit that button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. And anyway, yeah, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.